Hi everyone, I'm Ty. Hi, and I'm Dave. And um, we're here at uh, Aquarium Gardens, which is Dave's fantastic uh, aquascaping shop uh, here in St Ives in, uh, in England. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the plants that I've been lucky enough to see in the wild, and that Dave, uh, Dave sells here and uh, on his website. And uh, we thought we'd chat about them, a bit about their care, how they're growing in the wild, how you can look after them in a, in a tank, and uh, bring a bit of nature into your, into your living room. So, Dave, should we have a look at some of these? Yeah, let's go for it. Right, let's go with the first one. So, this is uh, Helianthum tenellum green, so what traditionally was Echinodorus, Echinodorus tenellus, tenellus yeah. which uh, comes in these little one to grow pots. Yes, yeah. And this is from Tropica? Yeah, it's from Tropica. Okay, yes, so yeah. I'll let you tell me about yeah, keeping so this in a tank. Helianthum tenellum green, uh, classic carpeting plant, easy carpeting plant actually. Be growing with or without CO2, okay. better with CO2. Um, very, very fast growing plants actually uh, can carpet your tank within a couple of weeks, especially if you've got CO2. We'll only grow about this tall, a few centimeters tall, so ideally in small or big tanks, really. Um, so, yeah, if it's a cracking sort of beginner carpeting yeah. plant. Yeah. And this is something that it's one of the many aquarium plants that is really semi aquatic, so it'll grow in human environments but not necessarily underwater. So a lot of the time, it'll be half the year it'll be up on the bank, out of the water, and half the year it'll be submerged when the floodwaters rise. Um, and I've seen this growing in sort of carpets along the edge of rivers and then bits of it going underwater and forming that sort of longer wow. immersed yeah. state. And um, I understand with uh, decent lighting, the, the leaves can get this lovely reddish yeah, tea. Can, that can right? go, yeah, I'm not sure about this particular variety, cause it's, okay. but I think under very intense light, yeah, you can get okay. that. But equally, if you were putting it in a sort of low-tech, mm. low-maintenance tank yeah. and leave it alone, yeah. it'll just go and do its thing. It pretty much do its, do its thing, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, that's one for the books. Right, this is one that I've got quite a lot of experience with in the wild. It's Heteranthera sostrifolia, also known as stargrass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is a plant that I see quite frequently in the area of Brazil where I work in uh, cast clear water streams forms these great big sort of uh, hedges, bushes almost, crawling over rocks and over sand, and occasionally gets caught up on overhanging branches, and then it forms islands at the surface. Wow. Which is quite cool. Yeah. It's a pretty fast grower. Yes, it is. And yeah. I'll yeah. let you tell us about it. Yeah, it's a, probably one of the fastest growing plants we've got, actually. Okay. Um, again, we'll create those huge bushes underwater, background plants, so it'll grow really tall, uh, great filler for big tanks as well. Um, also, an easy plant as well, so ideal for beginners. So... If you've got CO2, it will grow absolutely round, but you'll get this beautiful, like in the name, these star patterns from it as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a lovely little plant. Yeah. I suppose these are pretty good value as well in these pots because you get yeah. quite a lot of uh, plant. It's amazing how much you get in because as soon as you open up the plant, as soon as you do this, in fact, you can see the number of stems, there's probably over 50 stems in there. Um, five pounds fifty. By the time you spit it all up and planted it out, there, they're really great um, value. Once it gets going, you'll be pruning that back, planting those cuttings, yeah. getting it. And every time you prune it, two new heads, exactly. denser and yeah. denser. So you don't really need that many. You can buy one or two and propagate it, prune right. it, and replant it. You end up with loads of it. I've seen uh, in the wild quite a lot um, this style grass growing over very jagged uh, rocks yeah. with very pale substrate. Almost looks like the um, the ABA La Plata sand, oh, yeah. and then Serpe tetras cruising past it, brilliant red, and the contract. This plant with any red fish in front just really makes them pop. So that's a really good good one for. Yeah. All right, next one. Yeah. Uh, this is a great little plant. What's sometimes kind known as uh, Amazon frogbit, Latin name the Nobium levigatum. It always sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Like, yeah, you know, a lot of them do. Waving, waving <laughs> a wand at someone. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It's a great little plant. Floats on the surface, has these lovely trailing roots. Fantastic habitat for small fish, especially nervous fish um, that might jump out of tanks. But also nat fish that naturally hang out near the surface. Uh, gives them an extra feeling of security. And you sell these in the little uh, one-two grow pots. Yeah, these are one-two grow pots. So again, well. you get yeah. quite a lot of plant. There is a lot in, in there. Yeah, because yeah. I, I had one of these from you the other day, and uh, put it in my big tank, and it was like, oh wow, it's covering quite a lot of surface already. Yeah. And once they get going, they really go. You they? probably really only ever need one pot because, like Ty said, once this gets going, you'll find yourself pulling handfuls out every okay. week unless it covers the surface. 
but in aquascaping, particularly good plant for when you're just starting a new aquascape and you need some fast growers to support all the other plants while they're settling in. So for the first month, I cannot recommend floating plants enough. Except this yeah. one in particular is really and nice. Those suspended roots are sucking up excess exactly, nutrients, yeah. denying algae a chance to get started. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I've seen this growing uh, not in the Amazon but in the Pantanal wetlands in Brazil. And interestingly, you often see it once the waters drop, it's suddenly left stranded on the bank and it just manages to sort of survive. It almost roots down into the mud there, uh, waits for the rains to come back and then is lifted up and dispersed and then goes pretty mad. Um, and you often see it alongside another plant that you've got here, which is uh, Salvina auriculata, yeah. which is another great little floating plant. Salvina's got several uh, members in the family. The most common one that I see in the world is Salvina natans, which the locals call the uh, jaguar's ear. Because if you look at it, it's got that lovely oval shape right, yeah. and a very soft texture. Okay. And they say it reminds them of a, a jaguar. Yeah. So this is another good uh, plant for yeah, starting off. Yeah, probably in better in smaller tanks actually, just because of the size and texture of the plant. But the roots are a lot smaller as well, a couple of centimetres. So if you've got a nano tank and you're looking for a floating plant, I didn't know biome's got very long roots, so much smaller. Um, yeah, it's a lovely little plant as well. So. And equally for aquascapes as for biotopes, this is you know sort of plant if you want to shade the tank, if you want to create dark areas, yep. you know, for fish to feel secure, to add a bit of contrast in terms of lighting, having this and letting it grow, and eventually you're throwing it away because it just yeah, goes, it grows rampant. Mad, yeah. um, but it is yeah an ideal plant, especially for, for nervous fishes. Um, and fish, for instance, gouramis, uh, other anapotoids that stay up near the surface. Yeah. You need floating plants like these. Yeah. It gives, gives them the chance they might even spawn, make yeah, the bubble nests in there. Exactly. Sometimes fishes as well are particularly nervous when in the first month and they're just settling into your tank, and especially an open top tank. Yeah. You do want to make them feel a bit more secure and settled. So even if it's not long term, this plant or the limbo plant to start with are good for the fish and for the plants, really. And the other thing that I've seen quite often is my shrimp. Uh, like the amanas, yeah, they have to go up and hang, hang underneath, yeah. and they're just busying away. Yeah, yeah. And as well as being, you know, a joy to watch, it's just bringing your animals to another level of the tank. Exactly. Um, yeah. And and they seem to be benefiting from yeah. it. So yeah, it's one one to add. Mm. Right, we've got a few more goodies in here. So I'm going to go with this Echinodorus. Now, this is Echinodorus argentinensis. Um, the Echinodorus that I see in the wild. Uh, Myriophyllum, um, sorry, macrophyllum is not available in the hobby, but you can simulate it with yeah. the intensis. This is a very large plant, so mine got about four foot. Yes, um, <laughs> so this is for the big display yeah. central tank. So, yeah. if you were putting that in an aquascape, Dave, you'd be looking to something as big as the big, this one over here. So, this will grow right to the top and beyond in an open top tank. The leaves will actually, the stalks will grow right up to the top, and you get the leaf coming out of the water. So um yeah it's it's definitely a background plant definitely for big tanks um and it's it's an easy plant as well if you're going for that jungly look jungly type of tank as well very nice i mean equally you could put this plant in an aquascape such as the the, the five foot behind us in the corners of the tank getting some immersed growth it would look great i think echinodorus are brilliant for, for two reasons they give instant impact yeah um you've got a range of, of species and, and hybrids in stock yeah um some have sort of reddish coloration yes um, yeah. Patterns on the leaves, some of them, yeah. especially on the highlight. Yeah, they are really, as you can see, root feeders. So they prefer getting their nutrients from the substrate rather than the water column. This is good for sort of low uh, maintenance tanks as well. As long as you've got a nutritious substrate, yeah. something like the, the ADA Amazonia, they, yeah. they really boom. They thrive off that. Yeah. Great thing with Echinodorus is you normally get several in the pot, and eventually, as they establish themselves, they'll put off little daughter plants, which you can pinch off, mm. plant those. Um, they'll produce a lovely white flower yeah. or a long stem. And uh, like I said, these, this particular variety gets large, um, but it's really impressive if you put it in the right setting. So a favorite of mine. <laughs> Something a little more delicate now. So this is a member of the Bacopa family, Bacopa australis, yes. southern Bacopa. Yep. This is a plant I've seen quite a lot, again, in the clear water cast rivers, uh, where it forms sort of great big shrubs. Mm. Um, and will grow in shade, actually. It right. reaches up for the light, but then yeah where the sun comes in, it compacts down. Yeah. Uh, it can be very dense, great habitat for fish. It looks quite unassuming. Um, and again, it's one of these plants that I think if you start pruning it and planting the cuttings, yeah. it'll 
yeah, well, double yeah. up and yeah, they're very much so. So I mean, like Ty said, like in in the wild with with the in, under direct high light, strong light, it will grow very very compact. Uh, in the shade, you you will grow a bit more leggy and sort of upwards rather than low and compact. Um, it's got a medium uh, rating on it, so in my experience, CO two really helps this plant. So and it's a lovely sort of soft green isn't it? It is yeah very very nice green. And yeah. because of the, the small uh, leaves so the, these are the immersed leaves still mm. it's slightly larger than what you get when it's underwater. Yeah. It's a very soft texture in the tank mm. so it can be quite nice to put I suppose near hardscape to yes, exactly. remove yeah. a bit of that. Because it is a small texture small leaf it can really enhance the scale of your tank uh, you know, small textures make things a bit bigger in the tank. Of course, of course. Mm. Oh, this is a <laughs> favourite of mine. Yeah. Let's go for something a bit more dramatic. So we're cheating a little bit here because the, the nymphaea, the water lilies that I get to see in Brazil, uh, they're not available really in the trade. Um, but you can get away by purchasing something like nymphaea lotus, which has these lovely, uh, almost burgundy leaves at this point, but they also go a fantastic red, uh, often with a sort of spatter dock uh, pattern on them. And you can prune them down to keep them as a low, low shrub or let them rise up to the surface. Yeah, yeah. And I'll let you talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we've got this in our aquascaper 1200 four foot tank and we do that, we prune them low to keep, we want to keep it as a small bush rather than let the leaves get nice and big and it will block out the light if you let them go to the surface too much. So in, in the aquascape that we've got them in at the moment, we don't want them to block out the light. And you can just basically just prune the biggest leaves off and it will almost encourage and almost train it to grow smaller leaves and more compact leaves, really interesting. Um, but uh, a great um, focal plant as well. And um, contrast against all the other colours in your tank. It's, uh, it's a stunning plant to look at. You come well, they have a rhizome, a bulb, yeah. and they really need these nutrients in the soil. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. So they're good for, again, low maintenance tanks, um, low light tanks as they reach up for that light. Yeah. They are wonderful for providing habitat for fish, both in the wild and in your tanks. They provide security in terms of surface cover. The stems provide you know, structural habitat for fish to move through. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times when I'm filming underwater in Brazil, uh, it's under lily pads that I will venture to try and find the most interesting stuff because you look up and there's small fish um, relative to the splash tetra pyrrolina uh, and other little surface dwellers hiding under the pads, catching insects that tip off. Wow. Down between the stems, you've got your sort of tetra, your moncalsia, your hyphosobricon using the stems as uh, habitat and also larger fish like, well, we often see piranhas uh, amongst the lilies. It's a good place to avoid being eaten. Right, yes. by birds and other fish, but also to find prey. Mm. Um, so lilies can bring a really you know, natural and wild and often quite a, a jungly feel to yeah. a tank, yeah. um, which is why I think I, I like them. They're a little bit untamed <laughs> if you let them. So. Yeah. Now this is a pretty old school plant in the hobby. Myriophyllum matogrosens, also known as the green water milfoil. Um, there are, there's also a red variety, um, which is tuberculatum. Um, and there's also the lovely fine lead variety of Mirafilum Guyana, yep. which you've got, got in here growing in here, here as well, yeah. which is, as it suggests, from Guyana, so not from the region of South America where I work, but I do get to see this one uh, in the wild quite often. And it forms, it actually goes to the surface and then will often sort of lie flat in right. the wild. Yeah. Again, fantastic habitat for small fishes. Um, and in the aquarium, it's a classic, I think. Yeah, you yeah. Can tell I mean, us why it's it's so popular, perhaps. Or yeah, I mean, in, in the aquarium, it's um, it can go different colours depending on your setup. So we've got it growing in one of the tanks at the moment over there. Uh, it's very, very pale, almost yellow colour. Yeah. Um, I've had it go orange before. When it gets close to the lights, it seems to colour up more. Um, in a non CO two tank, it will be more sort of a greeny, yellowy green colour. So it really varies on colour depending on on your tank setup, and also. Um, if you've got loads of light, it will it will grow very slowly, mm. strangely. Okay. Um, which is, and then if you've got low light, it will grow up very very quickly. And so, in, in that highlight scenario, it yeah. sort of almost lays down over it, the hardscape yeah. and things. And it that does. Be quite dramatic. Yeah. It's sort of it, yeah. Cascading down. Exactly. Yeah. It's got a really sort of fine feathery leaf as well. It's a bit bigger than Guyana. The Mirafilum Guyana which is very very bright green. Yeah. Um, whereas this one, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit bigger as well. It's sort of wider. It's great for sort of filling up backgrounds and, and behind yeah. hardscape. Yes, you've yeah. You've got that lovely sort of green fold just sitting behind a rock or a piece of wood. Yeah, yeah, it's quite dramatic when it comes open, doesn't mm -hmm. that? Yeah. I yeah. like it. So you've got this growing in one of the displays? It's in the 900 at the moment. Okay. It's, it's, it's very strange. It's almost white okay. in colour. Well, we'll have a look at it. 
but yeah, we'll, we'll show you. Yeah. yeah, cool. Let's choose. Now this is a firm favourite in the Xscaping world, Eliacaris Sicularis. Yes, yeah. Um, and one of the many members of the Eliacaris family, one of the hair grasses. So this is what we call sort of the medium hair grass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, heavily used in aquascaping. Uh, it's a plant that I've also encountered in the wild along with uh, Eliacaris vivipara um, and Eliacaris montividensis, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, great little plant hardy and I'll let you yeah I mean hair grass is, a, is actually a classic carpeting plant great carpeting plant to start off with as well if you're looking for your first carpet um, you can get a mini version from Tropica so it's called Eliacaris Sicularis mini it's nice and easy to remember but it only grows a couple of centimeters tall so if you're looking a lot of people get confused with it's sort of known as like dwarf hair grass sometimes yeah. and people expect it to be really short but it's actually sort of medium sized um, so I like to use this sort of in the background in smaller tanks sometimes, nano tanks, or in like a mid-ground area in tufts up against like rocks. It's really good for softening hardscape again. Yes. If you've got lots of rock work especially. It's got a very fine texture, so it's... And I mean, at immersed you can see it's sort of quite dark. Uh, under highlight CO2 in the water it goes a sort of brighter green. It does go quite bright, yeah. Um, and one of the nice things is hair, you can just trim it down if it gets too long. Yep. And then it'll just sending up, keep sending out little runners. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a great way of sort of putting in with the shrimp tank because the shrimp's sort of clambering over it and busy foraging away and yeah. sitting on the stems. Um, again, it's a plant like many of our aquarium plants. So it's really a, a semi-aquatic, it's a marginal plant, so it's used to growing along the banks of rivers, occasionally being flooded, uh, rest of the year being immersed or growing in sort of very uh, humid conditions in mud, and then adapts to uh, its underwater form, to its uh, submerged form. It's hardy. It's in terms of temperature, yeah. uh, pH doesn't matter. It, you can use it in blackwater tanks. It doesn't need a lot of light, so it's quite yeah. good for some mid-range uh, planted tanks as well. Um, equally, looks stunning in, in high energy tanks. Yeah, yeah. If you give it some CO2, it will go, it'll go preserved and go really compact. Brilliant, excellent little plant. So this is Eliacaris montividensis. Yeah. Now I've got some of this in my tank, uh, which I got from you the other year, and it's already about sort of thirty centimeters tall. Yeah. Um, and the stems, they get to about a millimetre thick. Um, and this is quite an interesting plant because it, it's fine, but you can use it to as an accent, or you could have a large grouping of it together yeah. as a feature. Yeah, we used it once in, uh, in the showroom here. It was in a club behind a big rock, and it was kind of arching, sweeping over the rock. It yeah. was quite dramatic. Um, but it does, it does thicken up. It gets really sort of thick and... It's good in a, as a background plant because it's actually really small. So if you get in that depth and you mm. want something small texture in the background to look quite far away, be a good alternative to, to Valis Nana, for example. Yeah. If you want something a bit finer, yeah. perhaps not so rampant. Yeah, um, yes. but it's this is a, a sort of plant you want to use, especially with very small fish, small texture, small as boys yeah. passing through it between it, yeah. and it instantly looks natural. You yeah. think, oh, this is exactly what the fish are doing in the wild, same way they behave. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the more unusual plants, you don't encounter it so often, um, and you can get it here, so that's good. Right, we'll go for an absolute classic now, which is already going rampant here. This is Hydrocotyl leucosifal, that's how I say it, other people pronounce it differently. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually eat this, so in the region that I work in Brazil, it grows along muddy banks of rivers as well as in the water, and it has an, almost a peppermint taste, especially to the stems, um, and people throw it in sort of salads every now and then, especially indigenous communities oh, have really? long, wow. long used it um, to supplement diet. Um, one of the reasons is it grows there in huge beds. Um, I've actually had to work in lakes where we've had to struggle through several meters of it before being able to get out into the lake. Nice. Um, and as you can see, it grows pretty, pretty well, um, and I will let you talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably... If you've never grown a aquarium plant before, probably the ultimate beginner plant because yeah. you can you can dunk it in a in a bulk pool of water and it will grow. Um, and it does grow differently depending on on low light. If you grow, if you have low light, it will grow up nice and leggy. And, uh, but again, it high light will grow quite compact. But it's more for me of a jungly plant. Yeah. Um, so if you just if you just uh, want to grow lots of different types of plants in a tank, a bit of a mixture. Um, this is one of the ones to go for. 
this is also a brilliant plant that you can either just throw it in and let it float, mm. uh, and it will raise its leaves up above the water surface, form a sort of island. Fish love going in the root networks underneath. Yeah. In open top tanks, you can encourage it to climb up and out the tank. Uh, it'll just keep going almost like a house plant. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can plant it down to the substrate, prune it into a sort of shrub like bush. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the round leaf shape is really attractive, contrast with pretty much every other aquarium plant yeah. available. Um, but it does it does really go for it once it gets going. So yeah. you might want to go for a slightly more subdued option. This is Hydrocotyl Vaticillata, which is a smaller leaf form. Uh, this is a plant, again, I've seen in the wild in cast rivers, growing in really large carpets, um, often with perhaps Myrifilum poking through here and there, different uh, sword plants, Echinodorus, uh, growing up over rock work, growing around logs, very dense, and it's a carpeting plant, um, yeah. but it will rise up as well, is that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of my preferred species of the hydrocotyl varieties um, because you can really, it almost looks like little mushrooms and you can really break up a carpet with it. So if you've got a carpet of Monte Carlo or hair grass, you can put little tufts of it in there just to give a different texture and break up the lawn, yeah. so to speak. So um, it's, it's one of my preferred ones. It does grow low as well, so you give it some, it's an advanced plant. If you give it high light and CO2, it will really respond best. It will stay nice and compact. Uh, and uh, it's not as rampant as the Nessie Farlow Hydrocotyl, um, so it will grow not as quick, which is good. And, and like the other Hydrocotyl and the hair grasses that we've looked at, um, these are not just fantastic for aquarium, but if you were doing a paludarium, vivarium, humid conditions, um, I've seen this used quite effectively in some zoo displays, especially for poison frogs. Right. So they have it in very shallow water, then climbing up out along the bank, yeah. and it develops its it's immersed form and the frog's kind of sitting on yeah. on top of it looks fantastic uh is a great again a plant with small round leaves will stand out from everything else in the tank yeah dave thank you very much and uh, you're very welcome i've enjoyed it <laughs> yeah, so, thanks for coming in yeah thank you <laughs> thanks pal.